Yeah. This time I'd like to call to order the caucus meeting for the city of Twinsburg on June 11th, 2024. The time is 7.09. Shannon, would you call the roll, please? Mr. Fury? Here. Mr. Post? Here. Mrs. Walker? Present. Mr. Barr? Here. Mr. Bonacci? Here. Mr. Bellin? Here. Mrs. Labby? Here. Okay, next on the agenda is presentations. Do we have one for the caucus meeting? There are none. Items for discussion. Hearing none, we're moving on. Audience participation. Yes. First, we have Jonah Pachat. Okay. Hey, Jonah. All right. Howdy. Good afternoon. Um, Jonah Pachette, 11146 Heritage Drive. I'm going to keep it very short. Um, I really just wanted to give you an update on that Shred Day event. I figured it's pertinent to update you guys as well as anybody watching or in the audience. Um, it was a fantastic event. Before I pulled into Public Works at 845, we had a line out to Ravenna Road. Um, and this was a consistently busy event this year from 9 to noon. Um, you know, before the event started, I, I discussed with some members of the commission. I said, you know, I really hope we're, we're a little bit busy because last year and some years previous, you know, it, it's been lulled or slowed. And we were consistently busy from 9 to noon. And as we were nearing, you know, the noon hour, uh, the representative from Shred America, the company we were you know, working with this year, he said, we're, we're reaching capacity on the truck. And about noon, we had one car roll in, two tiny bags, and, and she, you know, he had said, we are at capacity. You know, had, had the mayor shown up with a bag, I would have had to turn him away. You know? it, it's, <laughs> we were at capacity, and that's fantastic to me. Congratulations. Um, and so I asked him at, at the end, I said, how much should we collect? And we collected roughly 53 bins of recyclable material, each weighing about 200 pounds. So that's 10,600 pounds or 5.3 tons of material collected from residents of the city, diverted from a landfill. And that, that is a fantastic event and a fantastic turnout. Um, I had a couple people ask me, they said, is this the only event we host? And it is the only event the city of Twinsburg hosts. But I wanted to let anybody in the audience know, or anybody watching, or you guys, so you could let your constituents know that Summit County Reworks, you know, summitreworks.com, they often host document shredding. And you could find a, a list of, you know, their dates they do this uh, there as well if you happen to have more documents that need to be shredded still after this event. That's all I have for you guys. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. But that's all I've got. Thank you, Jonah. Thanks, Jonah. I don't have that answer. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Next, we have Colleen Rubin. to be heard, right? So Colleen Rubin, the Underwood Drive, Twinsburg. I was here two weeks ago, and I think when people saw the video, they saw a lack of candor by the mayor, city council, when I began to speak about Mark Faust and the lawsuit. Being that this was a federal lawsuit, and four of you were on council at the time, you certainly were well aware of it. I won't name who, Right? Right? Um, but I do need to approach the topic of lawsuits differently tonight, since your memories don't seem to be quite what we want them to be or need them to be. So I'm going to give you a brief list of lawsuits to jog your memories, but also to make the residents aware of what's been going on in Twinsburg that you have not been keeping us apprised of, that we've basically been paying for. Number one, Michelle Grind versus the city of Twinsburg. This is currently an active lawsuit. Briefly, we are being sued by a former employee, an employee in good standing, who was replaced in the job given to Chief Mason's wife. I think there was a concern of nepotism being mentioned um, by the officers who were fired. Michelle Cole will be the city of Twinsburg. This case is about Officer Vecchio sexually harassing Michelle Cole, the least of which he did was exposing himself to her. Out of respect for Ms. Cole, I will say no more about these details. People can look up the lawsuit. The city refused to charge him with assault. Vecchio eventually did lose his job, 
but over the course of approximately five months, Ms. Cole endured hostile and retaliatory behavior and finally had to resign for her own well-being. And what did the city of Twinsburg do? We hired back officer Vecchio. Yes, and Ms. Cole once again requested that he be charged with assault and nothing was done. This lawsuit was settled quietly and officer Vecchio still works for us now. Mark Faust versus the city of Twinsburg. To clarify those, for those of you who did not understand two weeks ago what I was saying, I understand why you didn't because I didn't expect such a confused city council and a confused mayor and law director for the number of requests sent to the law director. I'm surprised that name didn't come right out and strike him because he's gotten lots of requests for the information regarding that particular suit. This is a case of a 19 year old college student who was treated terribly for no reason, no probable cause, and forced to expose his genitalia on Ravenna Road. His person, as well as his car and phone, were illegally searched twice. Nothing was found. This lawsuit is the result of behavior, behaviors of Officer Donato, again, and Krieger. They were never investigated or reprimanded for violating Mr. Faust's Fourth and Fourteenth Amendments. This cost the city, meaning our tax dollars, dearly. And this will be addressed in more detail. McGrew v. the City of Twinsburg. Twinsburg officers illegally entered the McGrew home on two separate occasions, having never a warrant or probable cause. Cornell v. the City of Twinsburg. Mr. Cornell alleged the city of Twinsburg impeded and threatened his right to be free from warrantless searches without probable cause by maintaining, implementing, and enforcing vague policies that threaten him with warrantless searches. This is by no means a complete list, but it is enough to show a pattern of behavior. I could list the illegal tasing by Officer Donato that again had no repercussions internally and every rule of using such force was broken. I could mention the lawsuit that we lost when another dispatcher sued for being passed over for promotion and our chief of police at that time just admitted he didn't like working with women. What I know to be true and want the city residents to know is that we, the city of Twinsburg, continue to get litigated due to bad acts by officers, their superiors, the law director, the mayor, and city council. Our law directors, present and past, our mayors, present and past, and council willfully withhold information and public records until forced by the courts, and then you quietly settle the cases and give away our tax dollars, and don't tell me it's insurance that covers it and you're only paying the deductible because I'm not buying. You have never made the citizens aware of the tremendous waste of our money. And may I remind every elected official here, you work for us. You're supposed to be upholding the law and following, being the example. And right now, I think there are several of you who need to step down. It is not your kingdom to do what you want. Thank you for your time. Next. Jen, anybody else? Next, we have Lynn Clark. Okay. Lynn Clark, Old Mill Road. Five minutes. Continuation of my previous comments. Here it's go, important sir. to note American Institute of Certified Planners, of which one of our staff members is a member, shall exhibit special concern for the long range, long range consequences and develop metrics, promote excellence in design, and use principles for sustainability. One would certainly hope that gets indoctrinated into our zoning code. Now, we look at what has been put into there, and we've got a little flyer that says something about removing obstacles to green building techniques. But it was stated by the city planner at last week's meeting, the city isn't ready for lead. Leadership environmental, energy environmental design. The city may not be ready for it, but the environment can't wait. 
Now, removing obstacles is not the same as promoting lead. Progressive communities that are looking towards the future, that are trying to fix their old broken practices, policies, and procedures, have embraced lead and are having buildings built like that new one for <laughs> Pepperell Fuchs. Hey, that looks at how can we use these resources prudently. Now, one of the things that also is missing that uh, used to be in our environmental performance standards is maintain ground and surface water quality and quantity. That's gone now. That doesn't make any sense to me. Preserve and protect historical resources. That's gone. That also doesn't make any sense to me. Mitigate adverse impacts to flora and, and fauna. That's the new language. I'm not sure how that's different than the existing mm -hmm. language, which is identify, mitigate potential adverse impacts on the habitat. Habitat may be a little more broad. Okay. Now, one thing that came out at last week's meeting, too, was it says in these standards we're going to add to the impervious surfaces. Mind you, that's only at residential commercial development. That is contrary to what LEED sponsors. Impervious surfaces. You don't grow anything on a rooftop. You don't grow anything on a driveway. It, it prevents the, the flow of water recharging the groundwater. We need more open space. Lead experts highly promote 50% open space, green, unfettered. Recommendations, retain all of 1175 now. Add to it if you must. Require all new buildings to at least meet the LEED bronze level. Don't permit tree clearing until all the permits for final construction are secured. Establish CO2 emissions. Capping the emissions at the 2023 loading. Measure the CO2. And, and report that for the whole city, not just the city properties. Now, last week at the meeting, the city planner says, well, we don't have information. Go to 2110 East Aurora Road, home of Ohio EPA. They have that information. Require rigorous groundwater investigations for all developments within a mile of existing water wells develop specific ordinances detailing how historical buildings and zones are going to be protected and preserved. <laughs> Revise one portion of the code at a time. There's just too much stuff going on, and I can't envision seeing this on the ballot of 500 page. Here's the old version. Here's the new version with the crossouts and amendments like the other changes that have appeared historically. Thank you for letting me finish, Mr. Fury. Mr. Clark, we got another meeting. You can stay for a, the next one. I'm done. Okay, sir. You have a good evening. Shan, anybody else on the list? That's all we have this evening. Okay. So at this time, <coughs> we are going to go into a brief executive session regarding. Uh, so let me make the motion. This time I'd like to make a motion to enter into an executive session to discuss matters pursuant to the Ohio Revised Code 121.22 GI3 to consider the employment of a public employee or official and conferences with an attorney for the public body concerning disputes involving the public body that are pursuant or their subject or pending to imminent court action. <laughs> Is there a second? Second. Mrs. Walker seconds. There's no Shannon, would you call the roll, please? Mr. Fury? Yes. Mrs. Walker? Yes. Mr. Bellin? Yes. Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Bonacci? Yes. Mrs. Labby? Yes. Mr. Post? Yes. Okay. We come back. At this time, we're going to <laughs> go into executive session. Should be brief. And we'll be back, and I'll reconvene the meeting, and we'll just keep going down the list. All right.
This time I'd like to reconvene from the uh, executive session where we discussed matters pursuant to uh, hiring new employees. Next on our agenda is pending legislation. We'll start with Ordinance 68, 2024, which is an ordinance to amend Part 11 of the Zoning Code. Uh, Council is authorized a contract with ZoneCo in February 2023. Excuse me. Since then, the company has worked with Rebecca Ziegler and the city's economic development director and city planner Lynn Muter on this project. Are there any questions? This is going to be read for another three months, three, three meetings. So are there any questions on this? All right. No actions being taken this evening. Ordinance 70, 2024. This ordinance is the annual tax budget for 2025. This will be its second reading tonight with an emergency clause added on the third reading to get it to the deadline of 720. <coughs> Mrs. Conway, do you have anything to add? No. Are there any questions regarding the tax budget that we'll pass on an emergency later on so in July so that we can get it there uh, to meet uh, the, the requirement for date? Okay. Ordinance 75. 2024. This is an ordinance to award a bid for the citywide HVAC contract for maintenance. The city has solicited two bids uh, on March 26th, and, and the second bid was open on April 17th. The lowest bid came from CRS Metalworks. It's a three year contract for uh, $217,000. Um, are there any questions on Ordinance 75 2024? Okay. Resolution 76, 2024. This resolution authorizes the transfer of Sergeant Eric Sawyer's service weapon in recognition of his service and his retirement. City Council is asked to, to suspend the three rules and pass this in our emergency as Sergeant's last day is June 13th. Any questions? <laughs> resolution 77, 2024. This resolution is for council's consideration to rezone a parcel 6400589 at the southwest corner of East Aurora Road in Chamberlain. This is at the request of the property owner. We'll have a public hearing. What's the date on the public hearing? July 9th. July 9th. July 9th. Thanks, July 9th. Just wanted to make sure. Um, and this is on its first reading. So is there any more, any more questions on this? this is the Rob Benjamin property out at uh, 82 in uh, Chamberlain. Okay, resolution 78, 2024. This is a resolution to place resolution 77 on the ballot. So if we pass 77, this is the ballot language. Or this would be putting it on the ballot. Um, first reading tonight won't happen for two more meetings. Resolution 79, 2024. This resolution is for council's consideration to rezone parcel 6401824 located at 9842 Darrow Road. This property is owned by the city of Twinsburg. Uh, per charter section 704 of the charter, the city has the ability to, upon application of the acquiring entity, be zoned public facility districts by the majority of a vote of council following the receipt of the report and recommendation from the Planning Commission and shall be governed by the regulations and zoning pertaining to public facilities districts. The Planning Commission reviewed this on June 3rd and it will be passed unanimously. There will be a public hearing on 7-9 and this will be on its first reading this evening. Then we have Ordinance 80, 2024. This is an ordinance that makes the changes to the salary ordinance. Um, this council being asked to put uh, suspend the rules and place uh, this on its third and final reading. Um, talked about this earlier. So, any questions? Thank you. Ordinance 81, 2024. This ordinance is regarding the Ask Me Office Unit. Um, and we've just talked about this. This is just being asked to pass the three reading rule for the adjustment to uh, Ask Me. Um, this is placed on emergency and put on, take action tonight. Any questions on that? Okay. Is there any miscellaneous? Mr. President, uh, during our council meeting, I'm going to have a couple of motions that relate to Board of Zoning Appeals. Okay. So uh, just uh, two of those. Waving 30 days. Uh, Waving the 30 days. Okay. So that's. Okay. Why don't you handle those motions when you do your report? Okay. All right. Okay. 
Is there anything else? That's it. Okay, Mayor, any miscellaneous? None. Thank you. All right. Okay, so we're going to adjourn the caucus meeting right now, take about a five minute break. If you want to address council, there's a sign up sheet at the podium, and we'll start the, the regular sit, we'll start the normal council meeting at, at, uh, at 7.50. Okay? Thank you. Caucus is adjourned.